here at the show, Oshkosh are showing uh, a couple of examples of JLTV. Yes, um, both of them, I believe, showing at AUSA for the first time, uh, and one of them publicly for the first time. Correct. Could you tell us a little bit about those two platforms, uh, perhaps starting with the, the shelter carrier? Sure, so what Oshkosh did is on our own IR&D money, we developed a protected light tactical vehicle that has command and control on the move. So currently, the, the shelters that go on the light tactical vehicles for command and control are not protected, and they have to be at a halt to be able to be operating in a command and control environment. Our vehicle, the JLTV, can keep up with the combat formations and have command and control abilities while it's on the move in the, in the formations. Uh, and the shelter that, that you have there, th uh, that's clearly a, a protected shelter. One would assume the protection is to the same level as the JLTV. Um, what sort of GVW does the JLTV offer with that shelter? A and can you disclose a, a sort of payload and that sort of thing? Well, what we can do is, is you are correct, it is a protected shelter and it's got the same protection level as the JLTV in its A-kit form. So that vehicle's curb weight is about 18.8, uh, 18,800 pounds and uh, we've got the gross, uh, the axle rating is at uh, about 22,000 pounds so we've got about almost 4,000 pounds worth of payload that we can configure the interior of that, that shelter in any way that the, that the customer desires. Uh, and one would assume, should your customer require uh, an unarmored JLTV, you, you could offer them a shelter on the back that's unarmored and that would allow for an increase in payload? Correct, it would. And I, I can't tell you what that increase of payload is because that would sort of give away the secret sauce of how the protection is today understand that completely um, and looking at that vehicle over there um, which JLTV platform is it based on? It's based off of our two-door utility vehicle so it's got the whole drive line of our JLTV utility it's got the same wheelbase as the JLTV utility and in fact the front cabin where the, where the driver and commander sit are exactly like the utility vehicle. And, and is there any uh, connection between the driver's cabin and the shelter on the back, or is the shelter in effect a, a, a secondary removable capsule? No, no, th there is a walkway between the, the front of the vehicle and the shelter. There's a side door and there's also an egress hatch up on the roof. Uh, and moving on to, to the second vehicle here at the show? Yeah, the second vehicle is our utility vehicle, another utility two-door vehicle. And what we've got on it is a U-Vision loitering munition. So that, that UAV can be deployed and it will go out up to 40 clicks and for up to an hour will the operator is searching for a target and then when it finds the target it will self-detonate. And, and are either of these platforms developed for any specific requirement or have you effectively developed them because you, you foresee needs for them in the future? Yes, we're looking at the, the Army's big six, what they're prioritizing, and one of those is a network. So the capability to have control and command on the move in a protected shelter would fit one of those, one of the six priorities. Also with the, with the Univision, U-Vision, excuse me, with, with that unit, we, we meet the lethality requirements that are in another one of the priorities. Uh, so, uh, looking beyond the United States, uh, could, could you give us a, a quick update on, on international JLTV developments? Sure, there is a lot of interest internationally for the JLTV. In fact, this show, we have had several international delegates come through and, and are very interested in these vehicles. Um, there are four countries that have said that they are interested in the JLTV for their light tactical vehicle programs. Slovenia, Lithuania and Montenegro. And of course there is the UK. And, and that would be the fourth one. Can you bring us up to date on what's happening in the UK? We'd have to let the customer really tell you that, but we do know that they have interest in, in the vehicle and I believe that program is moving forward. Uh, and one further subject, George. Um, Infantry squad vehicle. Um, it, it, it's fairly well known throughout the show that Oshkosh have partnered with Flyer Defence to offer the flyer for the infantry squad vehicle requirement. Um, firstly, Oshkosh 
partnering is, is, is quite an unusual thing. Is there anything you can say about the reasons behind that? And, and is there anything you can say about the infantry squad vehicle requirement thus far? Sure, we are partnered with Flyer Defense, and Flyer Defense has got a great design for their for the ISV vehicle. It's their Flyer 72, a ver version of that. So they've got the design authority of the vehicle, and then we will be the manufacturing authority on the vehicle. Um, we have been down selected. We'll supply two trucks to the Army in November. Uh, we would expect then a, a user's evaluation to occur right about the first of the year. And right after that, there will be an RFP that hits the street. So we'll, we're expecting a contract award on that program probably late spring, early summer. And, and, and so the vehicle would, would be built at Oshkosh's facility in Wisconsin then? Correct. Correct. It would be built in Oshkosh, down our flexible assembly line, yes. And of course, Oshkosh does have their, their own light tactical vehicle, the SATV. Um, so uh, why would you opt for, for Flyer when you have your own product? Did it just not fit the requirement? Correct. The Flyer fits the requirement much better than what our SATV vehicle does.